second. So we recording up at the top. All right, hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, millennials lead the way. We're back here with another video. Um, yeah, man, a couple y'all thought I was done for the year, man. You know, I thought about being done for the year, but I was like, you know what? Let, let me let me push out this last this last video, man, for the quarter. But uh, man, it has been crazy year. Um, and if you haven't learned a lot, then, you know, I don't know what to tell you guys, but it looks like my portfolio has been going strong. Um, a lot of new changes, a lot of new changes with the account. Um, we'll go over some of them. Um, we're not going to go into too much because a lot of stuff doesn't really apply to people. Um, you know, as you guys can see, I'm a premium investor now. I've been with this company uh, since November of 2017. Um, I got about over $17,000 that this company has paid out to me. My account is worth over $115,000, and I'm in the Balance Investing Plus. Um, looking over here at the returns, <clears throat> for 2020, I uh, made about... 3300 in dividends, uh, 1700 in appreciation, and 41 bucks for advisory fees, um, giving me a total of 5054 All time, we're looking at 11000 almost 12000 um, 5700 for appreciation, and 215 for advisory fees. All right, leaving me at Seventeen hundred five. I'm sorry, seventeen thousand five hundred. Um. Yeah, man. It uh, it's been it's been crazy, man. It's been crazy. Uh, I will tell you, like, so the premium account. Um, they've been sending me a lot of updates. So you guys are probably getting this uh these updates, which we'll talk a little bit about those also. Um, just talk about like the plans and stuff. And some of these neighborhoods that I'm starting to notice popping up around the nation. So, it's not really a red flag, but it is interesting just to see how uh, Fundrise is investing in some of them. But, uh, some of these new uh, updates for premium account users have been popping up. Now, I'm not going to go into any of them because, you know, quite frankly, it doesn't apply to a lot of people. And, uh, you know, we all know how much people can speculate on YouTube. So, but this one right here is, I guess, the biggest one. Um, you guys know me, man. You know, I, I didn't pull any of my money out. And I was inside of all three of these. And we'll go over to the uh, portfolio side. And I'll show you guys uh, kind of what that looks like. Uh, speaking of dividends... <clears throat> You guys really know how I feel about dividends, man. And I'll, I'll tell you something about dividends. Um, the more I learn on the uh, Fundrise website, because they have a uh, education page, which has a, listen, man, they, they got a, the help center. If you go to the help center or you just type in like Fundrise slash education, um, really, really, really good material in there. And the more I learn, the more I'm just like, if I could do it over, I probably would have picked long term. Now, I'm not telling you guys to do that, but it's it's because the more I learn, the more I realize, like, man, long term is the best option for me because it's the most tax efficient. And uh, tax discipline is something you're going to hear a lot in my videos and just going forward because this is what separates the... Uh, gamblers out there or quote-unquote investors from the people that actually are trying to have options later on tax discipline so um you know long-term investing would have been a more reasonable uh i guess it would have made more sense to me but as far as uh dividends i think yeah i think my latest dividends i don't think i showed you guys that but it was 800 so it's starting to go back up uh, things are starting to turn back to normal-ish. 
not 100 um, percent we're sitting at over 215 active projects and uh, before we go over to the portfolio um, I'm actually trying something new with the audio I've noticed that in some of my videos there's been like this this noise in the background and I can hear it now coming from my uh, computer so maybe if I push the computer away you can still hear my voice but you won't hear that noise so hopefully hopefully it works um, later on around the end of the video I'm gonna show you guys my goal and why I decided to actually start using this now so we'll head over to the uh, portfolio show you guys what time it is alright so the uh, Funrise eFund all right, if you guys have been with Funrise for a while, you probably got that newsletter. And in that letter, it, it lets you know that basically um, we helped out a lot of people. You know, not only in a tax efficient manner, but they gave those investors that didn't read a way out. And kudos to Funrise for doing that, you know. Um, and maybe it was an honest mistake. People didn't understand that. K1 forms came with the plus plan. Got it. No harm, no foul. Fundrise is like, hey, too easy. You guys, we won't penalize you guys for it. But if you go to the Fundrise like front page, they make it apparent that you will get K1 forms. Like they got like 80 different notifications. So, and I, I guarantee somebody's going to miss it again and make a YouTube video about it. But and speaking of K1 forms, I don't think I don't think people truly understand what K1 forms are meant for. And again, this is the uh the line between your gambler and your investor. So you guys need to do your due diligence on how Fundrise utilizes a K1 form. Alright, tax discipline, remember? But because they did this merger. This is now my largest uh, fund, I guess. This is my largest position. And all uh, these, this was the combination of three funds, E-funds. I was also in the Washington E-REIT, not E-REIT, but uh, E-fund. Um, I was in the National E-fund and the Los Angeles E-fund. So this definitely helped me out. Um, K-1 forms are good but they are costly so narrowing it down to one should be uh, awesome uh, let's see as far as appreciation I got like 1500 bucks in appreciation and just uh, this alone so I'm, I'm interested to see where this go you know how fast this grows also um, and it being my largest one uh, yeah, man, and I, I got like 215 active projects. I think I mentioned that. Um, so I think that's about it, man. You know, all these projects are cool. Like I said, a lot of these communities are popping up. Um, and I think it's kind of interesting. So let's hit up uh, performance. Do I want to do transactions? Uh, I'll hit transactions because I think something very interesting happened in transactions. Um... <clears throat> And, I, and I'm interested to see how it's going to reflect on my uh, my taxes. Because if you look at this amount, the last time I put this much money in this account was, I think, when I was 25 in 2017. And it was $44,000. You know, Um I didn't take as much time as most people take nowadays. You got some people taking years to try to see how a company operates. Um, as you guys can see, I'm not, you know, playing around. I'm actually trying to have options later on. So, and you have to get the money inside of the account. Which I got a video coming out on that. You know. So, I got the two tabs up here what I'm going to talk about. But, uh. Let's go to performance. I'm gonna show you guys how the you know performance has been going. Um, most of your accounts should be reflecting uh, where they merged that. Um, they all went into the Los Angeles e fund. 
So um, it took the money that was in Washington, D.C. and National E-Fund, and then they threw it in here. And it makes me wonder, you know, like, will they start doing that with the rest of these? And if they do, you know, will they give people an out also? I mean, I can understand why they gave people an out here. I don't think that's ever going to happen again, nor should it. Um, I think Fundrise is pretty, pretty transparent when it comes to how they invest. So, you know, if you miss it, yeah, it's on you, man. Uh, but let's go to my favorite chart right here. So, um, I have no complaints about this chart. I do wish, though, that if you guys have the Fundrise app, on the app, you have the option to, like, dial in on a specific year. I kind of wish they did that and they're reflected here so I can show you um, kind of like the trend of what the graph looks like in a more uh, expanded picture. But, uh, you know, here you can see my returns <clears throat> for each year. And we're about to close out 2020. And I don't know if Fundrise does this every time. We'll see on the 31st of this month. But usually on the 31st of this month, they update the NAV. Um, they only updated the NAV of the uh, Washington, D.C. and National um, E-Fund because they were doing the merger. So, and when they did that merger, I gained a lot of appreciation after they did the merge. Or before they did the merge, sorry. Um, but I, I suspect this to go up again on the 31st. Or may, who knows, maybe it'll go down. I don't know. But my guess is it's going to go up. So this wouldn't be this not this wouldn't be my final number. I'm guessing I'm going to end again more around the uh, 7,000 range. So, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm done with contributions for this year. So as far as, uh, yeah, so 12,000. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done with contributions for this year. Um, I'll probably continue that into next year. It'll probably be 12000 again. And again, like I told you guys, I'm trying to catch my wealth front account up to this. I'm doing pretty good. I'm almost there, but no cigar. All right, so until I can get that account caught up, I might do it. And uh, I ended up getting that promotion, so I, I might, you know, get there a little faster than I thought I would. So, but yeah, you know, you can see the chart here. Um, you can see that uh, curve starting to form. Well, not yet. I mean, it's still going to take like maybe, I don't know, like 15 more years or so before you can actually see any type of like real um, shape to this. But this is a combination of monthly deposits, uh, appreciation, and dividends. Minus any type of advisory fees. All right. So, long story short, this is my uh, version of investing in real estate. It's the best of both worlds. I don't have to sell my soul to the bank um, and pay interest for the rest of my life. And uh, I can reap all the benefits of real estate. So, yeah, that's that. All right, we're going to head back to the overview and then we're going to talk about my uh, goal. All right, so let me see this goal. So originally I didn't use the goal because I didn't like how it was set up. Actually, it's one or two things. It's either I didn't know how to use the goal tool or I did not like how it was set up. But I'm pretty sure I just did not agree how they had it. Um, before, they had it to where they almost kind of... I'm trying to see how to explain it. But you couldn't, you didn't have much control on the amount of money you want to reach and them telling you how to get there like it is now. So with my goal, I said, I want to have a million dollars in this account by 2040. Down here, they let me know that, hey, at a minimum, you need to invest $1,000 a month. You need to reinvest your dividends and contribute, like I said, $1,000 a month. Over here on the chart, um, this will land you anywhere from high in the 1.5, your target range of one, 1 million, 
or the low side of seven hundred thousand. Now keep keep in uh, keep in mind, this is for informational purposes only, and this chart is a hypothetical growth account growth. All right, so nothing set in stone. Don't get bent out of shape if you can't you know get it done in that amount of time. But uh, yeah. Um, also look up what informational purposes uh, means. Also, like look up look look up what it means in a financial sense. All right. Uh, let's see. What else was I about to say? And I named it legacy because I don't know. It just seemed like a cool thing. You know, this would be my legacy. Um, what I am interested. What I think also is cool is if you're off track, it'll give your account like a warning. Like it'll send you a notification. Hey, you're off track. And then they'll give you, I think, like two to three options of how you can get back on track. Um, I think they're just like, hey, add, you know, this much every month to get back on track within six months or do a one time payment of blah, whatever. What I haven't tested yet is if, say, I put two grand this month in there. Will it tell me that, hey, you don't need to put another $1,000 in for a month and still be on track? And now, if they do that, that would be awesome. And the reason I say that is because, let's say I get a lump sum of cash and I decide to put it all in Fundrise. Fundrise will let me know, hey, you don't have to c contribute anything for six months and you'll still be on track. You know? This is, this is like... I don't know, I think that's just a cool feature that I would think, you know, Fundrise can somehow maybe put in there in the software. I don't know, just a, just a thought. Um, yeah, but, I, you know, I think that's it, man. This, uh, this video is, I don't think it's going to be that long. I didn't really have much to say in this video um, other than... You know, you guys need to put get the money in the account. Um, if you're out here wasting money, I mean, no, if you're out here wasting time on, uh, you know, passive income, especially you guys that's in your early 20s, mid 30s, quite frankly, passive income shouldn't even be on your mind. And, you know, the whole dividend investing marketing strategy that's going around on YouTube, you know, it'll, it'll eventually wear off, but... You guys need to seek some type of, like, advisor that can make sure that you're staying on track. But, um, you know, other than that, man, that, that, that's about all I got. Oh, yeah, actually, we're supposed to talk about this. So, if you guys are still here, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this real quick. So, I, I've been looking at some of these uh, new acquisitions that Fundrise have been uh, doing. And I think it's pretty cool, but it's interesting to see what type of neighborhoods that are being set up. And um, they call these horizontal multi-families. And, you know, basically what it's meant to be is um, it's kind of like a traditional apartment um, type of community. But instead of building up, they're just building horizontal. So it's all the same and it's all within like a uh, small community. Holy crap. I hope that wasn't loud to you guys because that was like super loud in my ear. I got my freaking headphones on. And, uh, man, that was loud. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, but these small communities, man. Um, I kind of foresee more of these communities popping up in places. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see like where, where it goes, you know. We'll see where it goes. Because, I don't know, man, i just been thinking a lot about it. I've been reading the business plans. And uh, it, when Fundrise does a business plan, it, it's, it's almost like the type of business plans that Fundrise does with a company, you couldn't even do that with your best friend. You know, how their, how their you know, debt structure is, like, organized to where, like, they set it up to where Fundrise gets paid regardless of what happens. Or they literally take all your stuff. <laughs> you know, even if 
you want to back out, you still have to pay back all of the interest and everything you owe. Like, it, it's insane. Well, it's not insane. I mean, it's smart. And, you know, it gives me an ease of mind to know that, hey, my returns are protected. You know, it's protected from everybody's emotions, and it's also protected in case, you know, people can't hold up on their side of the bargain. But, um, it's just crazy, man. Like, it's... And, but I guess you can be that type of way when people owe you money. You know, and this is why I tell you guys to stay out of debt, man, because the borrower is slave to the lender, right? So, you know, for you guys going out here, calling your home an asset and taking care of it for the bank, um, you know, the bank can pull your card at any time and take it back from you. So, but yeah, man, I think that's about it, man, for the, uh, overview and uh that's about all i got man this year's been something crazy and who knows what next year is gonna look like man so let me see if i can show you this before uh, you guys get up out of here man let me go to uh go to home page go to resources so if this is your first time for actually for the guys that have been signed up with my link this is where if I get any time, this is where I spend it at, all right? At resource page, education. This is where I spend any free time at, all right? If I get free time and I ain't trying to dedicate it to Call of Duty or something, um, it, it's going to go here. It's either going to go here or it's going to go to Wealth Front's blog. So, uh, and kudos to Funrise for this because this page, man, this page is clean. It definitely did not look like this in 2017, let me tell you. You know, they, they just organized this to where, like, you know, actually, when I look at this page, when you look at, like, how this is organized, it makes you want to read it. When I look at my microeconomics book that they make me pay $80 for, um, I don't want to read anything in it. It actually makes me hate finance. Um... So, and maybe that's for a reason. But yeah, man, you know, kudos. It's it's a good page. Spend some time here, and start to slowly but surely, you know, get caught up. You don't want to spend too much time here, right? Because this is not your profession. And regardless of what most YouTubers like to think, um, if it ain't your nine to five job, you ain't getting a W two from it. Yeah, you're almost wasting time on it. So you need to dedicate more time to your career than to your uh, hobby. Unless your hobby is making you more than your career does. But uh yeah, I think that's about it, man. I think that's all I got for this update. Um if you guys got any questions, throw them down in the uh comment section below. If you have any questions about the company, I highly advise you go to this link right here. Um, you have you'll have a better chance of success going to Funrise than to a random YouTuber or some disgruntled person on the internet. All right, they have all the questions you could possibly think of and then some. Why does this keep happening every time? I can go all right, so if you have questions, go to the help and frequently asked questions. All right, it's filled with any and everything that can answer all of your uh needs all right so yeah man that's all i got all right um I, i'm not sure when i'm gonna do my next video but you know stay tuned and yeah millennials lead the way